Now that many countries are mandating the use of masks in public places, such as Austria, Czech Republic, Slovakia, and others will follow suit, we need to understand what we can expect from these masks. We need to understand how airborne transmission really occurs. Different diseases have different modes of transmission. There's airborne transmission via small particles, transmission via contact or fomites, fecal oral transmission, and many more. One disease can have multiple modes of transmission. Bacterial and viral infections that have more than one mode of transmission are called anisotropic. Disease severity can differ for a given disease depending upon the mode of transmission. Influenza that's transmitted by aerosols is generally thought to be associated with a more severe illness than influenza that's transmitted via contact or fomites. We've heard in a previous video that airborne particles that are smaller than 10 micrometers can penetrate down below the glottis, whereas particles that are smaller than 5 microns can penetrate all the way down into the alveolar space. Now, as you can imagine, particles that penetrate deeper down into the lungs can cause pneumonia, whereas particles that will penetrate into the upper respiratory tract can cause upper respiratory tract infections like bronchitis. And as we know, pneumonia can be a much more severe and debilitating disease. Severely affected symptomatic patients with COVID-19 tend to have pneumonia rather than upper respiratory tract disease. This indicates that the virus penetrates deep down into the lungs via very small airborne particles. So the lower the particle size, the more problematic, right? How are these droplets and aerosols actually produced? Well, through coughing, sneezing, spitting, but probably even through regular breathing or just speaking. Now, you would think that someone with COVID-19 or influenza for that matter, would infect someone by coughing up virus-containing particles that would then infect others, right? Well, it's not that simple, really. When someone coughs or sneezes, that cough or sneeze normally produces particles of larger size. And as you will learn in just a bit, these particles contain less virus than small particles and are less likely to penetrate into the lungs. Let's have a look at this intriguing paper published by the group of Donald Milton at the University of Maryland. Infectious virus in exhaled breath of symptomatic seasonal influenza cases from a college community. They collected exhaled breath of patients with influenza for 30 minutes while the participant was seated with their face inside of a large open end of a cone-shaped device seen here. The inlet cone draws in 130 liters of air per minute and allowed participants to breathe, talk, cough, and sneeze naturally throughout the sample collection. Subjects were asked to breathe normally and to recite the alphabet once at 5, 15, and 25 minutes. They collected coarse or large particles of greater than 5 microns and fine or small particles of below 5 microns in diameter. Audible spontaneous coughs and sneezes during breath collection were counted by direct observation in real time and by playback of digital recordings. Here's what they found. On the left pane, you can see the concentration of viral RNA in coarse aerosol and on the right in fine aerosol. They stratified according to cough frequency. They compared those who never coughed to those who coughed seldomly, just once or less per minute, to those who coughed frequently more than once per minute. Now one would expect that people who cough frequently would produce more coarse particles and that these coarse particles then contain more virus. But that's not what they found. They actually found that viral particles contained within coarse particles were pretty similar when comparing frequent coughers to infrequent coughers. You see the RNA concentration within coarse particles of infrequent coughers and frequent coughers is very similar and not significantly different. What they did find, however, was that viral RNA contained in fine particles 
was dramatically increased in those who coughed frequently compared to those who coughed infrequently or those who never coughed. So what this means is that a person produces particles with high viral load not when they cough, but actually during times when they don't cough. These observations suggest that cough is at least in part an epiphenomenon more of a response to irritation associated with high viral loads in distal airways than a direct source of infectious aerosol. So cough and fine virus latin aerosol particles are associated, but not causally so. And what's the proposed mechanism of fine aerosol production in these instances? Well, several researchers have recently shown that exhaled aerosol particles are frequently generated from normal, healthy lungs by small airway closure and reopening. It has been hypothesized that during respiratory infections, airway closure and reopening frequency would be increased due to inflammation with an increase in aerosol generation and contagiousness. This suggests that individuals who are sick produce fine virus latent particles during speaking and breathing that have a high viral load and can travel far down into the lungs of a susceptible individual. And these are the kinds of particles that are likely not filtered well by a surgical mask. Julian Tang and coworkers have created a visualization of breaths exchanged by two people in conversation standing one meter apart. Most of the time, the puffs of air they let out remain separate, but portions of their exhalations do sneak from each person's breathing space into the others. So it's conceivable that in crowded public transport or public events where people can breathe on each other may also lead to transmission of infection even without any cuffing going on. This is so important and shows why social distancing, staying at least two meters apart, is so important even if you should be carrying a mask.